So if your partner walks out on you, there are some things that you need to do immediately. So you need to contact your bank and let them know that your partner has left. So that if you've got joint accounts to make sure that the money doesn't disappear from the joint accounts, you know, to get you can freeze the accounts or you can just ask them for a new for two statements to go out to two different addresses. You need to contact the mortgage company and say to them that, that the partner's left and to ensure that they are aware of who's going to be paying the mortgage and to ensure that you get a mortgage statement or a mortgage a review, whichever way they do it, whether it's annually, monthly or quarterly, to make sure you get a copy of that because you need to know if it's not being paid. If your partner's left, you also need to contact your local authority because then you can get your 25% discount if you're the only adult in the house. That's not a huge amount of money, but it is a lot of money that you could be saving. You also need to, for example, contact the car insurance people. So if you've got a policy that's got joint names, take them off there because it could make your policy cheaper. Um, other things like, you know, let the water board know. If everything's in your partner's name, you now need to change it all into your name. These are things that people don't think about initially because they're very, very upset. But they are things that could save you money and they are things that could stop you from getting into financial difficulty because if it's in your name, you pay it. If it's in somebody else's name and they don't pay it and you're in the house, you're still liable. So you have to kind of, that's the thing you need to think about is that if you're in the house, you're liable for everything that goes on in that house, regardless of whether or not you're on the uh, paperwork. So you just need to take that into consideration. From my personal experience, when I got di divorced, um, my ex-husband moved out on the Friday and on the Monday morning I was at my solicitor's office and I was doing a statutory declaration of name change because I didn't want my ex-husband's name anymore, but we weren't divorced. So I went down to my solicitor's, I printed myself off a letter from the internet, he signed it, I paid him a fiver to sign it and that was it. I was then a new person. So. I felt great because I was no longer attached to him, even though physically, I, you know, legally I was. But with that letter, I could go to my bank and change my details. I could go to my mortgage company and explain to them that I've changed my name. I could contact anybody I liked as the new me, which was great. Changed all my CV, did everything I needed to do. And it was actually really refreshing to think, great. I'm no longer attached to him and by name, although legally you still are, but it does, it's kind of like a, a reborn thing. It was really good. So, um, yeah, if you want to do that and you want to get rid of your ex-husband's name or the other way around if you've got your wife's name, then a statutory declaration can be printed off the internet and it has to be signed by a solicitor and they normally charge you between five and 15 pounds just to put a stamp on it and off you go. And that's you reborn. When you start the process of being getting divorced, it is very scary and you do have moments of where you sit there and you want to burst into tears and everything, you know, panic, whatever it is that how you deal with it, it's okay. If you sit with me and we're on the phone and you suddenly burst into tears because we're talking about the house insurance, for example, it doesn't matter. I will probably end up crying with you, but it's okay. It doesn't make any difference. I expect that. I wouldn't expect you to sit there and go, I can do this, I'm a roughly tofty but if you want to, that's fine, but everybody has an emotion, so it's okay. Don't feel embarrassed about being upset, it's part of the process. And if you don't get it out, then you bottle it up and it's not good for you anyway. So, um, you know, take it one step at a time, give me a call, we can chat through what it is that you want to discuss, and then if you don't want to discuss the things I need, we'll just do it another day. It doesn't, you know, we can take one hour or we can take 20 hours, it doesn't matter we we'll just get the right result for you. If you take a mortgage with myself, I would get remuneration from the actual lender that you go to, so I get paid a commission from the lender. However, even if I spend 20 hours talking to you over the telephone and you decide that you don't want to proceed, that advice is free. When you go through a divorce, everything changes. So you need to reconsider the whole of your life because you've gone from being a couple to being a single person, whether that's with or without children. So before you would have set up everything to be 
that your ex would get the money, your ex would get the house, your ex would get this, the car, the jewellery, whatever. However, when you're now a single person, you now need to reconsider who gets all of your possessions and if there's children, who gets your children. Um, realistically, the first thing you need to do is sort out your will, because if it's a joint will, do you want anything going to your ex-partner to be able to support the children or would you prefer to have an executor, somebody else look after the children or at least the financial side of the children. You then need to consider things like your life insurance. So if you were to pass away, do you want your ex to receive your life insurance? If you have got a joint critical illness policy, if your ex has a critical illness, are you prepared for them to take your your policy and, and use it. You know, these are things that you really need to consider right at the beginning because as you go through the divorce, those are the parts that kind of get forgotten. So you need to really think about everything right up front. No, you would find that probably most people don't even have it set up ready for when they uh, are married so that's the bit that gets the forgotten it's the part where you say to your financial advisor yeah I'll do that another day and that other day doesn't happen so there is no insurances in place probably about five out of ten times whereas it's very important that you do have an insurance in place but more so if you're a single person or a single parent so you have to provide financial security for your children because at the end of the day it's only you realistically that could be there to support them if your ex-partner is no longer able to or is no longer around to support them. So it's something really important to think about. As a mortgage and protection specialist on the Alternative Divorce Directory, I'm here to support anybody in the BN area. So that would cover from Eastbourne, the other side of like the far side of Eastbourne, to Littlehampton and up, up towards Lewis. It's kind of like a triangle that I cover. However, I can deal with anybody from across the country if you don't have a particular advisor in your area. Um, I am able to meet you face to face, obviously geographically if you're in the BN area, if that's easiest for you, or I'm able to do everything over the telephone, uh, via email, fax, however, however's best for you realistically. Um, if you like face to face, I love face to face because it means I get to meet people and that's probably the best part of my job is meeting people. Um, but it's, it really is realistically what's best for you. I'm a fully qualified CMAP, which means I've got a certificate in mortgage advice and practice. I have to remember that. Um, so it means I'm fully qualified to discuss all mortgages, whether that's residential, buy to let. Uh, I can also discuss insurances, whether so that's life insurance, critical illness, income protection. I can also deal with business customers. So even if there's not a house involved or there's no mortgage involved, but they've uh, got a business together, but they've got insurances on that business, I can then discuss how the business insurance works elsewhere. There's a lot of things I can do. I'm also fully qualified for equity release, which is for the older client, who's uh, maybe thinking of splitting up, because it's not just youngsters that do it. Um, I'm fully qualified to help all people with their finances. So at our initial conversation, there will be a, some few things that I will need to know before we can go any further. So I will need to have a completed budget planner, I will need to see your one month bank statement so that I can make sure what's on the budget planner is actually what's being paid out because it's amazing how many times we forget things. Um, we'd also need to know whether or not you have to pay school fees or whether or not you have, you know, whether or not you have a budget for things like car insurance, car tax. All of those things need to be included in your budget planner. They often get forgotten because they're annual renewals. So you forget your home insurance renewal, for example, you forget your car insurance renewal and that has to be budgeted in. Um, we'd also need for you to have all of your paperwork with you, even if it's just at your house and I haven't seen it, I just need to have things like uh, for you to have your insurance policy document to hand so we know that you started your life insurance in 2002 and it's going down so in other words it's decreasing but you know how much you pay and you know when it ends. Then I can help you to ascertain whether that is the right policy to keep or whether we need to change it. So the other thing you need to think about is uh, talking to your council tax provider because if your partner has left then you're entitled to a 25% discount. People forget that and they don't realise to do that until it's you know a year or so down the line. Also if you've got a bank's joint bank account you need to inform the bank that they've left 
but if it's a joint bank account they also need to have copies of the statement so you need to get two sets of copies if you have a mortgage again you need to have the mortgage statement go to two different addresses to ensure that if your partner is paying the mortgage for you that you can still see that it's being paid because if they're not paying it you need to know straight away and if, if the details are all going to the wrong address then you're not going to necessarily know that it's not being paid but these are all things that I can talk you through from the start as long as we chat first I can always give you a list if you're not 100% sure but you know for an initial conversation the best thing to do is a budget planner and a bank statement and we can go straight from there how did I come to do what I'm doing now I kind of fell into it a little bit um, after I got divorced I moved 25 miles away from where my ex-husband lives and um, that's because it was the furthest away I could go with, with keeping within our parameters of our divorce. Um, I was travelling 25-30 miles a day there and back to do a particular job which with two very small children was extremely difficult leaving the house at 5am and not getting back till 9. It made my life very difficult and after about 9 months to 12 months I actually decided enough was enough and found a job down where I was locally based. Um, however, I didn't really like the job I took, I just took a job because that's what I needed to do. And um, then a friend pointed out that uh, the Chelsea Building Society were looking for cashiers. And I thought, I can do that, that'll be easy, that'll be great, and it was more money. So, um, and then after I'd done that for about 12 months, somebody said, would you like to train to be a mortgage advisor? And I went, hmm, that would be really nice. So I thought, I'll train and see how I like it. And then, I loved it. I love my job. I love the being able to help people to see how they can progress with their life. Buying a house, getting, you know, even when you're getting divorced, it is still possible to buy that home. I like being able to just help people. That's what I've always done and that's what I love doing the most is to help people. Um, I then got the opportunity to work in a bigger bank, so I took that. And I then got the opportunity to go self-employed and do, do it as I do now for Willow Private Finance and it's the best thing I ever did going self-employed. It took a lot of courage and a lot of being scared, but you know, did it, but I love it. It means I have much more flexibility. I get to meet a huge amount more people. And I also have a much bigger range of products to offer somebody rather than just, you have to take this particular bank product. Um, you know, I use little tiny lenders that are completely different to a bank. They're like little building societies and it's, they're personable and they're nicer and it makes my job so much easier with dealing with clients because I can't, you don't, I don't have to say this is what I've got and this is what you have to take. Now I can go, what do you want and how can I help you? And that's the best part about my job and I love it.